Hey, great grandpa. Uh, not not a lot of people know that you are my great grandpa, but uh, could you please tell us what your name is? Yeah, my name is Daryl Smith. So you were in the army? Yes, I was. And what military rank were you? PFC. So how did you become a private first class? Well, when I first went over to uh, Korea, I was a, just a plain old private, and then we had the had an inspection one day over in Korea for our company, and uh, this major was going down the line checking everybody's weapon, and he come to mind and he says, uh, who cleaned this? I said, I did. He said, it's the cleanest one I've seen yet. Make them a PFC, <laughs> just like that. How was boot camp? Boot camp? Yeah. It was tough. I mean, it, it's supposed to be tough. They, they don't want you know, have, have it so soft, you know. When, when you get over it, you know it's going to be tough. Yeah. And, it, and uh, the, I was at uh, Camp Roberts in, in Northern California, and it was very hot there in the summertime. And uh, I know one time we were out on the rifle range, and you had to lay down on the ground to shoot at the target. And it was in this gravel, it was 115 degrees. Wow. <laughs> and that was, that one of the miserable parts. Gosh. There were a lot of miserable parts about the, about the basic training. I know we had, uh, we walked everywhere. There were other companies that were actually rode and trucks to do the things we did. Yeah. And then we had, uh, 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 at the end of the training, everybody had to walk a 25 mile, take a 25 mile trip, walk. Wow. Which was tough and it was very hot. Did you do good in boot camp? Yeah. Why did you choose the Army over any other branch? I was drafted. Okay. Yeah, I was drafted in that, uh, the right after you got out of high school, Everybody had to register. So when I turned 18, then they let me know that uh, I may be, may be called. So. so why was America needing to draft people? And what year did you get drafted? 1951 when I was drafted. And uh, we, I don't know where we had uh, some, uh, they called it a police action over there in Korea. And uh, like I say, we did people going over. Didn't uh, soldiers didn't know the real reason why we were going over? We went over there and we did the fighting because uh, America needed it. Oh, uh, what did you think about being drafted? Well, I just thought I, I didn't especially want to go, but uh, you know, you figure that that's what the, com the country needed needed to. Fighter, so uh, there were a lot of us that uh, probably didn't want to go, but uh, we did. We did our job. Was it tough on your family? Yeah, not really. Because I had uh, I had four other brothers that were in the army also at different times. Mm. Um, one one was in the Second World War. And, well, all th three of them were. And then I had a younger brother. Who was he was in Korea also. So you were in the Korean War? Yes. Yes, I was. Okay. And um, what did you specifically do? Well, I'm just a rifleman. I mean, you know, so foot soldier. And uh, wherever they told us to go, you know, for any battle or anything, that's where we went. What were some of the places that you went? In Korea? Yeah. I, have, I don't, you know... Never knew any pl where I was all the time, as far as any city or anything like that. They just moved us and they never said where we were going or anything. So, do you know why they didn't tell you? No, it's just that uh, wherever the, the the company was needed, that's where we went. You know, they just they just moved us. And what were some of your experiences in while being in Korean in in the Korean War? Well. They had a, an outpost that uh, different companies would 
who would take it for for a week, you know, just up on top of a mountain on a hill, and uh, you do that for like a week, and then another company would go up there and relieve you, and you'd come down, and I had to do that probably about a dozen times because uh, you just alternate okay. what, what company would be up there, and you just you're out, I'm really looking out over the valley like. Uh, what did it look like? Mountainous and it, it uh, very, well I think one of the highest hills that uh, we didn't go up because they said that the Chinese were, had artillery that they just actually took up on there. It was 10, 1062 as they called it, 1060, 1062 meters. Uh, so the mountain was named 1062? Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's what it was. Uh, military talk, I could call it. Talk to people, so. Yeah. Probably had a real name for it. But. How was soldier morale in the Korean War? It was very good. Uh, you you end, uh, end up with a lot of new buddies when you do something like that. You know. How were you able to make friends easily? Well, it, then every, everybody drank beer, and we always, we had a, an allotment when we were behind the lines, and you always get together and play some cards and, and have some beer. Or just okay. a pretty good experience knowing that we weren't fighting, so. So people definitely had a good morale because of that? Yeah. What was the weather like in Korea? Well, when, it was, when I first got there, it was warm. And then you get the rains too. Okay. And, and we, of course, we were all, all we had was just a two man pup tent. You know, two guys sleep in a pup tent. But when you're out in maneuvers and it, it's raining, we'd come back and build a big bonfire just to dry our clothes. Uh, was it ever extremely cold? Yeah, I, th I don't know what the temperature was, but it was. Uh, they gave us uh, more clothing, warm clothing, for the winter, because we, before we just had our summer stuff. Yeah. And, uh, but it, it, you'd get uh, ice on the ground. In fact, one time that uh, we had ice and we were on maneuvers, and I went to kind of go up just a little bit of slope and slipped. Well, I. Scraped up my shin, and about uh, three or four days later, I got an infection in it. Wow! Well, how? What was the infection? It was just. Well, what happened? It went up my back up my leg, and I got it like a. I don't know what they call it, but it's about the size of a, an egg, formed on my leg. So I had to go back to. Uh, Nash, you know, you, you remember? I don't ever watched. Uh, Mash the, the program. I've heard of it. And uh, I had to go back there. I was back there for a few days with, and they lanced that and drained it all out. And then I had to go back to my company, but I healed up. So, mm. uh, was that very scary for you? Yeah, it was, you know, it was a, uh, infections like that could, could kill you out eventually, you know. So. But you have to get it taken care of because it goes into your bloodstream. What are some of your most favorite stories from the war? Favorite stories? Yeah. No, I'm just thinking that uh, we were up on a on maneuvers on a hill one time and watching the Navy airplanes in the, on a distant mountain range and dropping napalm on the mountain. And they come down very low, and then let, drop that, take off, and there's a big old cloud of smoke and, and fire. And I, I thought that was pretty neat myself. Uh, would you have liked to have been one of those pilots? Yeah, I think so. What were some of the bad things? Well, we were our company was going going up a hill, and we got when we got to the top, everyone was taking a break. Well, they start start shooting artillery at us, and it was 
it was blowing up all, all around us. And our radio man got hit. He had taken the, the radio off of his back. That's where he got hit. He had killed him. But, you know, to see something like that, you kind of kind of worry about your own self, you know, what, what could happen. And, uh, but uh, that, to me, that was the worst thing I, I even saw there. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you still think about it to this day every now and then? Uh, do you ever think about that to this day? Oh, yeah. I mean, you'll never, you'll never think of that kind of stuff is uh, ingrained in your brain. Uh, what was the food like? Well, the food was pretty good, but we always ate outside. And you had your uh, best gear with the food in it. But you sit out in the rain sometimes. And, you, and uh, like the mashed potatoes were always dehydrated potatoes. And it got rain in your mess kit. <laughs> Food wasn't that good, but uh, no, I, at times we did get to eat underneath the tents, and that, that helped. When you feed that many men, you know, it, it, you gotta have space. Did you spend a lot of time in trenches? Yeah, because well, we had, uh, I mean, actually I was in bunkers, they called bunkers, because they were covered. They all dug out, but they still had to cover over the top. And uh, yeah, it, you spend time in there, you know, if you had the time to do it, you got probably where you were. Unless, uh, if you were about like behind the lines and, and, and you had, had bunkers back there, but you, you know, you just, just kind of relax if you can, because that, you get pretty tired after a while. Okay. All the walking you do. Uh, on average, like, how much did you walk every day? Oh, when, when we're out, it, I don't know, probably 10, 12 miles just to, to, just to get to a certain spot. You always had to keep your feet in good good shape. Uh, did anyone get a uh, trench foot? No. Okay. No. I had uh, an extra pair of socks, so I always had a, a dry pair. And every chance I got, if I had a wet pair, I could just made sure they got dry mm -hmm. and they... I know, like, uh, when we were in the bunker and sitting upon the front line, at night, well, we had everybody, we had two men in a, bu in a bunker, and they had uh, uh, one of the mummy sleeping bags. And, uh, in fact, it's, I had a young guy with me, too. And, uh, at night, well, one, of, one of me has to sit guard while the other guy's sleeping. So I'd always take my boots off and climb it down. He would he would never take his boots off. He was ready to run, I think. <laughs> yeah. You got the Purple Heart? Yes, I did. And how did you get, the, get it? Well, I was actually uh, hit by some shrapnel from a mortar. Okay. I, I have been in uh, in the bu in a bunker, and I just stepped out for just a second, and that uh, mortar landed, and then it hit me in the chest. The shrapnel hit me in the chest, and uh, they had they called uh, uh, Nash, and they sent the helicopter, small one of those small helicopters. And uh, they had the uh, had the litter, which was a like a bed almost, on the outside of the helicopter. And it, of course, it was cold. It was very cold. And uh, so they picked me up and they flew me back to the hospital detachment. Where where was the hospital detachment? It was it was behind the lines in in, in Korea there. So. Uh, where did you go to get healed? To uh, get healed? Well, they did the surgery right there in Korea, and and I was in that um, hospital. That it's all big tents, you know. I was there for probably about three days. Then they they flew me to uh, 
Tokyo, Japan, to okay. the army hospital over there. What did you do in Tokyo? I was just I was in the hospital all the time, and, and because they were concerned about uh, my lungs, because because of that uh, wound, I kept getting fluid in my lungs, and so they were always about, about uh, once a week they would stick a big needle in my back and drain the fluids out, and they come pretty close to having to. Surgery on, on my lungs to, to go in there and clean them out, but uh, with all the uh, medications and everything I had, that uh, they said that, that that wouldn't have to be be done. So I was happy about that because those surgeries are are no fun because they give it they call it a half moon uh, surgery. And they What's go that? and they take some ribs out, so it's no fun. Okay. Uh, and where did you go once you were healed from Japan? Well, I'm, I'm still in Japan. Went to a, 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 it's a rehab center, re rehabilitation. Okay. And uh, I spent uh, probably about a month there. You just kind of recuperate. And then uh, I had, you get so many points for being in Korea to begin with, so many points for the length of time you were there, and if you're wounded, they had a point system, and I had enough points to come home. Okay, uh, were you glad of that, or did you want to stay? Well, I wanted, of course, I wanted to get home. <laughs> but actually, when I in the when I was in the hospital, that's when I turned 21. Uh, was that a fun experience for you, or no? Turn to 21? Yeah. Well, the thing was that uh, I wanted to, go, well, my birthday's on the 30th of December. They wouldn't let me go out for, they'd let us have a pass a couple of days out of the week, you know, from the hospital, go out for the day for a few hours. Yeah. Well, they wouldn't let me go out on my birthday, but they let me go out on New Year's Eve. Went out and had a few drinks. <laughs> Why didn't they let you out on your birthday? I don't know. They cool. They thought maybe I'd be drinking too much or something. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> did you enjoy your time in Japan? Yeah. I the little bit I saw, I actually took the, on those bullet trains they have. I mean, those things move. Wow. I just I just went to another, took a ride to another town and came back. And, yeah. It's, um, who gave you your, or where where were you given your Purple Heart? In the hospital. Uh, in Japan. Yeah. In okay. Japan, yeah. What was how was that ceremony? It, you know, it's a, it was a surprise to me really. I wasn't expecting it. I didn't think it was bad enough to get a Purple Heart, but I guess it was. <laughs> <laughs> how was your flight back to America? It, I didn't fly back. Come back on a on a ship. Oh, okay. A Navy ship. Went over on a Navy ship also. Wow. Uh, what Do you remember what the ships were called? The what? Do you remember the names of the ships? No, I don't. Well, like the, I think the uh, one going over, I think it was Thomas Jefferson was the name of the boat. Were these boats a uh, battle boat? or uh, war, Were these boats uh, warships or just uh, cargo ships? No, they, well, they were actually Navy ships. They were just smaller, smaller ships, but uh, yeah, it took us, like, I think it was five days to get over there or something like that. Wow. <laughs> and come back, too. And, uh, yeah, they were, they were no fun. Actually, I was on a advanced, what they call an advanced party, a small group of us, and uh, we had actually have like guard duty a couple times during the day and then all these other soldiers on there they had cl cleaning up places and they, they were doing they do actually doing work on the ship where the advance party we only had that little bit of work we had to do 
Well, that's nice. And yeah. Oh, yeah. When I go over and come back the same way. It's a, yeah. It's pretty nice. <laughs> um, uh, did you enjoy your time with the military in Korea? Yeah, I think so. It was a different experience, you know. It uh, actually, you learn a lot of a lot of discipline in the military. Anyway, you, you, I think you know that. So. Yeah. Um, are you glad you uh, served? Yes, I am. Uh, pretty proud, you know. Okay. Uh, who was the first person you saw whenever you came back to America? Well, just other soldiers, really. Cause there were a lot of them come back with me. But uh, I mean, as far as family and all, yeah. Well, I'd be my oldest brother, Waldo, and uh, and his wife, my sister-in-law, Viola. Okay. And, uh, yeah, because that, that's that's who I lived with. So it was a good experience, I, I believe. You can see why the young people now that in the military dedicate themselves to the the cause anyway, you know. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Very good.